Hey, Jay here, got our latest project. Uh, at first glance, you might look at this bike and think this is the before picture. For this project, we're doing a budget build. We picked up this bike about eight or nine days ago and have quickly turned it into a good running trail bike. We're gonna give an inside look at everything we did. We picked up this bike for 1,300 bucks and we're trying to build this thing and do everything good to it and keep it under $3,000 total price. So kind of did the essential stuff, didn't worry about graphics and new plastic if it didn't need it. So we're gonna show you everything we did. So for this build, we wanted to stay under $3,000 total cost. And so we wanted to hit the essential items. On this bike, the stock seat was pretty uh, beat up. We went with a moto seat and they actually lowered the foam for us. The stock foam was okay, he cut it a bit shorter. So for the bars, the stock bars were pretty jacked up. So we went ahead and put some new, we put our 604 Renthal fat bars. It's the bend we use on all of our bikes. We had a good set of used Sykra Pro Bend handguards. We put those on. All the plastic was in good shape, or relatively good shape. Looks a little ugly. So we kept all the stock plastic on the bike. On the front brake, and the rear brake for that matter, uh, and the clutch, all three need to be bled, needed to get a flush out of the system and to be bled completely. Um, the previous owner hadn't done a good job of bleeding them, and so there was plenty of air in the line. So we flushed out the system with good brake fluid, dot four and replaced all the brake fluid in both the front and rear and that helped our brake action tremendously. For the clutch we used mineral oil and bled it and it's a very easy process as well. So the largest expense on a used bike and fixing up a bike like this would be the suspension. In this case the, the WP went through the suspension for us the stock stuff was completely blown out. Shock and forks we're in need of some serious attention. New seals, new oil, bushings inside and so forth. So at the same time, we set that up for us. So that eats into a large portion. 40% um, or so of our budget to rebuild this thing can be just in the suspension alone. So that's something you wanna be careful for on looking for a new bike. On this bike, the FMF Gnarly and Turbine Core Silencer were both in really good shape. So that was another factor when we bought it. Small, dense, a little bit beat up but still in really good condition working wise. So we've left those on. So on the motor on this thing, the crank on these bikes, these KTMs will last a long time. For us on the motor, we replace the clutch plates. Stock plates have some aluminum plates in there. The Henson setup are all steel plates, uh, not nearly as much contamination in the oil. So fresh clutch in the thing, also a fresh vertex piston. That was key, we changed that out. One thing to watch for when you drop the cylinder back down on these KTMs if you're not used to it. You can pinch the power valve arm. Uh, we did the first time. Very simple to fix back up. We also installed Moto Tessinari reed cage at the same time. Stock reed cage, the stock reeds had a little bit of a chipping going on so it was great to get those swapped out. We had an old skid plate that we kind of cut up to fit perfectly uh, as a used one. Um, I shouldn't say it's perfectly, it's close. We got it uh, pretty close. Plastic skid plates are kind of nice because they don't resonate as bad as aluminum ones um, and provide some good protection there. So after bleeding the front and rear brake, we noticed the rear brake was sticking. We adjusted it properly and then also changed out the brake spring and now it has perfect uh, good action there. Stock, these KTMs, this is our second bike that we've had this problem on, on a used one. They have a little oil filler plug right here it's a check it looks like it's a check for the oil it has like a pipe fine pipe threads on them and these these tend to strip out um, in this case sure enough it was stripped out and leaking so we pulled it out and we made a plug and plugged it we plugged it with this applied plug we had and then used some bond on the other side of the case to hold it in place ensure that there's no leakage or ever coming out the stock kickstand was removed from the bike um, guy said it broke off or whatever. So we have the Trail Tech has a really nice kickstand, replacement kickstand. The stock foot pegs were in good shape. Um, if we had some more budget, we'd upgrade to some IMS pegs. Of course, on any used bike, you want to go through the carburetor. Double check that the jetting's correct. You can't trust the previous owner to know that they had correct jetting in it. Um, in this case, we received the, the stock owner's manual. So with that manual, we were able to look in there and KTM has a great jetting chart. And in that chart, you can set up your jetting accordingly. And that's something we've done is change needles and pilot jet right to our needs. So with any used bike, you want to grease up and check for any uh, poor bearings. In this case, 
the stock steering stem bearings in the KTM were actually in very good condition, surprisingly. Uh, they, I mean, they must have really good water protection. So we re-greased those and put it back together and it feels like new up front. The only other bearing that we uh, looked at that needed attention was the sh top shock bearing. And we placed the top shock bearing and the lower shock bearing with the Pivotworks shock bearing kit. And that solved all the problem. With this bike being a no linkage bike, the, the shock bearings are going to take the load of the abuse over the years. So for this bike, since we're trying to keep our budget low, we had a good used AT81 tire off of one of our previous bikes. We put that Dunlop AT81 tire on here and in the rear, we, went, we did have a new Dunlop 803 trials tire, which is great for all around trail use. So of course, uh, with many bikes, older bikes, you want to put a brand new air filter. And many of the, the stock air filters have been washed too many times and aren't holding up. So in this case, we have a uni two-stage air filter in here. And while we had it apart, we cleaned out the entire air boot while we were cleaning the carb and doing the top end. We made sure that air boot was perfectly clean inside. This bike came with a Renthal twin ring rear sprocket. It was a 48 tooth stock. We looked up in the book, was a 49. So we're going to leave the 48. We put a new primary drive O-ring chain, which is a great chain for off-road. And here we used a used chain guide. This, the one that they had on here was pretty beat up. This one's in pretty good shape, so we went ahead and threw this one on here. Um, if we were to upgrade later, we'd go with the TM Designs, something really strong here for future, but this one's in good shape for now. Okay, so that's a good inside look at this uh, project bike. Just got done riding it, uh, really fun. So one thing to remember when you're fixing up an old bike, um, piston, clutch, chain, uh, carburetor jetting, all those types of things are probably more important than it looking nice. So all the things we did here work really well. Didn't find anything we really weren't happy with. The thing runs like a new bike uh, with the brakes, feeling like a new bike, the clutch. The hydraulic clutch in these KTMs is amazing. And even a 10 year old clutch led properly feels really good so that feels amazing um, our gas cap started leaking a little bit so that's one item that we're gonna have to address we have some stock tanks that we're gonna check those out or we'll buy a new seal so other than that really amazing bike uh, got some great products on here and uh, check out Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com to fix up your bike just like this